To start off with a quick introduction, in physics, circular motion is a movement of an object along the circumference of a circle or rotation along a circular path. Knowing that, let's get into the first question. Question one states that a ball is traveling at 16 meters per second in a circle on a rotating string radius of 10 meters. The maximum tension allowed in the string is 50 newtons. What is the mass of the ball? Now, looking at our givens, we have a velocity, 16 meters per second, radius, 10 meters, force of tension, 50 newtons, and our mass is unknown. Now, using our forces formulas, we use F net equals MA. And then we find what our F net is. Our F net is our force of tension. Now, F net equals MA, so FT equals MA. In circular motion, acceleration equals velocity squared over R. So we can plug in A for V squared over R. Then we just rearrange to M equals FTR over V squared and plug all of our givens with our knowns into our calculator and we get a mass of 1.95 kilograms or rounded to 2 kilograms. Now, the reason this question is a developing level is because it introduces the basic ways of using circular motion and the centripetal force formula. Question number two says that a curve has a radius of 50 meters and a banking angle of 15. What is the ideal or critical speed, the speed for which no friction is required between the car's tires and the surface, for a car on this curve? So these are what we like to call banked curve problems. And because there is a car on an angle, which is banked at a certain degree, going around in a circle, which means it applied to our circular motion definition. So once we have that, we look at all of our givens and we can see that we don't have much. We only have our radius, which is 50 meters, and our theta, which is 15 degrees. That's all that the question gives us. Unlike the previous question, which gave us every single variable that we needed to plug into our equation. So afterwards, we we take the car and we make a free body diagram. Any forces problem, you always have to make a free body diagram. So we look what forces are applied on it. Okay, so we always have the force of gravity going downwards. Then we have our normal force, which is always perpendicular to the surface it's laying on. So if the car, if the surface is this direction, then the normal force is going to be going this direction. And then we divide our normal force into components. So step one would be to find what the centripetal force would be. So what is the force that is driving the car and pulling it towards the center? So if we look at our free body diagram, which force is going in this direction towards the center? would be our normal force in the x direction. So we solve and find for that. We have our force of gravity equals our normal force in the y direction. Our force of gravity is mg, so mg equals our force of gra normal in the y direction. Then we have to solve for our f and x. So using trigonometry, we solve for f and x is equal to f and y tangent theta, which if we solve for previously, which f and y equals mg, mg equals tangent theta. Now, just like the previous question, we plug in F net equals MA, F and X, which is our centripetal force towards the center, equals MV squared over R. That's the formula for the centripetal acceleration. Then we have MG tan theta equals MV squared over R. Cancel out our masses because they're on either side. G, which is force of gravity, tan theta VR, V squared over R and then we just rearrange to isolate for V. And our final answer is 11.5 meters per second. Now, the reason for this being an understanding level question uh, is because it lets us use our knowledge of components to figure out what F and X was, and it doesn't give us all the variables at the beginning. We have to solve for them, unlike the previous question, which gave us every single variable that needed to be plugged into the equation. Question number three. Question number three is mastery. So it's the hardest one. 
The question says that the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road is 0 0.6. Determine the maximum speed at which the car can safely make a turn of a radius of 200 meters with a banking angle of 20 degrees. So we have all of our information. We have our banking angle, 20 degrees, radius, 200 meters, coefficient of friction, and our velocity is unknown, which is what we're solving for. So now we have a new component. We have our components of friction, and friction always opposes the direction of motion. So the question said the maximum speed, which means that the speed that at which it won't fly off. So always flying off this direction, that means the friction has to go that direction. So start off, part number step number one is finding all the F net in the Y direction. So we have the Fn for the normal force in the Y direction, the force of gravity minus the force of friction in the y direction. Then we take all of those numbers, we, sub, uh, we solve and isolate for normal force. That will be used later. Now, for the second step, we use the F net of x, which is the F normal x, and then the F friction x, which then we isolate and we use common factoring to remove the fn which then we sub in our previous formula to that and then we multiply and simplify to get this formula now our final step is we use ma which is our centripetal force is equal to our f net in the x direction so mv squared over r is equal to this formula that we had down here for the x and then we just cancel out the masses and isolate for v and we get our number of 49 meters per second this question is in the mastery section because it introduces a new force component, friction. You need to be able to identify the centripetal force and know how to convert formulas like friction is equal to normal force times mu. It also demonstrates the addition of multiple vector components, like when trying to identify whether to add or subtract the x vectors versus the y vectors. Now, you're probably wondering what are some real life applications? Where do we see centripetal force and circular motion in the real world? Now, a couple examples, the first example would be artificial gravity. On the International Space Station, they can simulate the effects of Earth's gravity by making the outside of the space station spin at a certain velocity so that there's a pull downwards keeping you on the surface. Another example would be roller coasters. When you're at the top of the roller coaster, the reason you don't fall all out and splat on the ground is because the velocity is so fast. Another example would be satellites. Satellites, if you want them to orbit at a certain velocity or a certain height, above Earth, they have to go at a certain speed so that they don't get sucked down due to its gravitational pull. And the final example would be the banked curve uh, questions that we did, where if your car is turning at a certain, on a certain angle and it goes a certain speed, then it won't slip or fall off. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed.